In February, downtown St. Louis at City Hall, the Pan-African flag flies below the American flag. How many lives do you have to sacrifice to in this battle of bloodshed? Is it my people's blood you paint to yourself with? You dare stand above me and wave as if your fingers don't rip breath from noose. Mother from son, cut baby from belly. Waving over me, we just forgotten whose back you crawled to get up there, please. How many lives did I have to sacrifice to win this battle of bloodshed? Enough. Everything I have done has been for all of us, not some newborn conceptual cotton. I'm here because this is my land. You are just a hitchhiker. Tell me, how can you do this without them? Stand there without them. Fly in the breeze without all the weight of them bleeding corpses or all them bones bleached white by the poison consciousness of your people's fingertips. You, you must, must have forgotten who I am. You are blinded by your weakness and your nation crumbles because there be too many bones on the battlefield. Forgotten. Will you pick my people up before we ever pick cotton? However, I see you picking more cotton than we ever did. You called it green and called it wealth. Green back, like my people's infected lashes. Rips the welts on the back of black back. They were swollen and bruised black and blue. Okay, boy. At least we have a country. Under my roof, in my land, eat my food, no no rules. I am the inspiration to the birth of a nation. Do you know what it took to build this? My stripes be the colonies woven with the roots red. Reminds of the blood brave women and men have shed. Like skin, we are no longer segmented snake. Don't tread on the white, be the pure sun in my land. And blue, justice unforgotten built, you stole in red, called it a brotherhood, added two colors, called it important, I call it a good try. Like, like honor, honor, like, like a, a basin or place in this nation, nation, my red, was painted when you placed blade to black neck. Brown rib cage or copper color backside, and that first red color trickle down body to second color black. Black is origin, the origin of man, and the center of civilization. And third color came as the red blood slid down black body and bathed Mother Earth. That liquid drenched the green. You owe everything to me. Your whole claim to fame is a clap back to a 1920 song made in my fucking country. Your whole failed unity has left you with a failed, fragmented continent. Your white flesh be alien to my kingdom. You be nation, I be continents. My origin was woven and stacked like baskets on top of head. And you stole these brick and roots. My origin is for my people to assemble across the continents of region to defeat your acts of white supremacy, defeat white noose on black windpipe. Which pop participant is willing to swing his feet from the mountaintop to so surrender their blood onto this piece of cloth and pick this piece of cotton without bleeding fingertips? Fingers. You should be grateful for that black shadow has been cast out. For you have been graced with the Lord's omniscient, all-knowing white light owns all, owns all. Forever omniscient, knowing we open our gates to heaven. I am a God that has opened more gates to freedom than your spoon-fed God has ever spoken his book. You chain my people's hands so we have no other choice but to pray to your God. Your godless country that is unified by nothing more than borders. The ashes will fly, fly back, back into, into the, the face of him who throws them. Opulence means your tongue is mine. Means I have the power of God to mold the clay of history. Means your people can make tribe after tribe. But I own the sweatshop that sews the timeline. All right, thank you. Welcome to St. Louis and welcome to TCG's 28th National Conference. And let's really hear it, hear it again for, for the amazing youth poets of Herb Arts here in St. Louis. When I learned that they would kick off our opening plenary, my first thought was, what a perfect way to begin the conference. My second thought was, wait, you want me to go after them? That is a hard act to follow. But then I thought, isn't it fitting? Because in the past few years, it's been young people, and yes, young people with a passion for the arts who have led some of the most successful movements for justice. In fact, four years before the Parkland theater kids changed the narrative on gun violence, artist organizers Patrice Cullors and Darnell Moore organized the Black Life Matters Ride, working with local activists in solidarity with communities brutalized by law enforcement. Organizers from 18 different cities left St. Louis to start Black Lives Matter chapters in their own communities. Now, as we meet near the Gateway Arch, a monument whose soaring beauty is complicated by its origins in honoring the westward expansion and thereby the horrors of manifest destiny, 
we acknowledge that this place has always been at the heart of change in our national story. At the same time, St. Louis is a deeply local place, resistant to any single narrative that outsiders wish to write upon it. Many of you experienced those many narratives in our community field trips earlier today, which were made possible by Edward Jones and TCG's Audience Revolution Program with support from Doris Duke Charitable Foundation. This city is also Mound City, site of one of the largest pre-genocide native cities on Turtle Island, and home now to many indigenous peoples. To help us honor those caretakers of the land, I'm grateful to welcome Deborah Taffa to the stage. Deborah is a writer, professor, and enrolled tribal member of the Yuma Nation who co-wrote a documentary, The Trail of Tears, that will appear on PBS in November. Please join me in welcoming Deborah Taffa to the stage. Kumathom, if everyone can put their feet on the ground and feel where they are in a physical space. We begin our meeting today by acknowledging that we are in St. Louis, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Ilioni people who stewarded this land throughout generations. During the 19th century, tribes in Missouri were forced to give up their lands. For example, in one instance on November 10th, 1808, the great and little bands of the Osage Nation were forced to sign Session 67, which ceded 52.5 million acres of Missouri and Arkansas. In exchange, the U.S. government gave them 1,200 in cash and 1,500 in merchandise. All tribes in this state were eventually removed. This ground we stand on was taken from the original people. It is unceded native land. I would like to take this moment to recognize and honor the sacrifices of all tribes who once lived and thrived here, who lost their land so that today we could live, work, and participate as allies in today's event. Blessings to the creative work that you do. Blessings to those allies whose grandparents were placed in Japanese internment camps. To those allies whose grandparents were torn for their, from their families as slaves. To those allies whose grandparents were preyed upon by dole foods. To those allies whose land in the Middle East is even today being contested. To those allies who aren't allowed to cross the border on their own ancestral land to those allies who have been persecuted for differences in their bodies, gender, or sexuality, to those allies who are not responsible for this undoing, though they may sometimes be wrongly blamed, for those allies I have forgotten to name, but with whom I stand, hoping to hear and honor their stories, and for my indigenous allies, especially those who fought valiantly against the Dakota Access Pipeline, even as the waters become dirty and the coal is ripped from our mother's belly, we will pound our ancestor's drum until it bleeds, fill huge holes with sand, and stretch odd-shaped band-aids across earth wounds growing too big to heal. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. St. Louis has long been called home by many artistic powerhouses and theater people, including Tennessee Williams, Vincent Price, Maya Angelou, Chuck Berry, and many more. It's my pleasure to welcome two current powerhouses who call this city home to the stage, Jennifer Windsor and Steve Wolf. They are co-chairs. They are co-chairs of our St. Louis Host Committee, along with Ron Himes, who you'll get to meet tomorrow, and they've all been passionate advocates for their city and wonderful partners for this conference. Welcome. <laughs> That's where I'm take 
Okay. okay, great. Hey, an extraordinary afternoon here today. Uh, welcome to the conference. Welcome to St. Louis. We in the active and large St. Louis theater community are thrilled to have you here and to discover our complex city. You saw some examples of their passion earlier today. A big thank you to Jenny Windsor and her crew at the Shakespeare Festival that helped coordinate the planning for this gathering. Also thanks to Ron Himes, the St. Louis Black Repertory Company, and William Roth of the St. Louis Actors Studio for their work on the host committee. There are many activities going on during the conference, and we don't have time to mention a lot of them, but our colleagues at the Muni Opera in Forest Park has just opened a rare production of Jerome Robbins' Broadway. The Muni is offering comp tickets to the attendees of this conference on the next three nights. You don't need reservations, just go to the box office and say you are with TCG. Not sure where you'll be seated, there are 11,000 seats. <laughs> it's something to see. Uh, and it is outside, so dress appropriately. I saw Tuesday night, it's amazing. Check out the rave review in the Wall Street Journal from yesterday. Uh, it's a rare show to see. Opera Theater of St. Louis, which performs at the Loretta Hilton Theater in Webster Groves, at the theater that we at the Rep perform in, is offering tickets to Orfeo Friday night at eight, and also the premiere of An American Soldier Saturday at eight, using the code ARTIST25 or ARTIST50, for either $25 or $50 seats. As you know, we are at the Arch Grounds and the redo of the grounds is now finished. So do walk up to the Arch and experience what I think is one of the great sculptures of the world. Unfortunately, the museum and the rides to the top, uh, which are pretty harrowing, uh, won't be open till July 3rd. However, however, evidently the film of the making of the Arch is, is running and I don't quite know where it is over there well worth seeing because it's like 1776. You know it's going to finish, you know it's going to be complete, but you're not quite sure as the last piece goes in with fireboats spraying the arch with water. It's really worth seeing. For baseball fans, Kevin Moriarty, uh, the Cardinals are playing the Cubs Friday night at 7.15 and also Saturday. That just down the block from the hotel, it will be wild downtown. Tonight is the, the open NA party will be at the City Museum. It isn't a museum. It's an amazing playground. I don't know if there's anything like it in the country. It's unique and that's why we wanted to hold the party there. I would only say that if there's a sign that says, don't put your finger or hand in something, <laughs> pay attention to that. The Jenny is gonna talk about other special activities during the conference. Again, welcome. We are so thrilled you're here. This promises to be a most exciting event. Jenny. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, you know, I have to say it's been an honor to be a co-chair of the host committee along with Steve Wolf and Ron Himes, who can't be here with us tonight because as a true theater maker, he is out, I believe, at rehearsal, but we may catch him a little later in the conference this weekend. Uh, I want to make sure that I honor uh, the entire host committee. So those of us who are here this evening, do you mind standing up? The St. Louis host committee, I'd like to give you all a round of applause. I hope you all had a little taste of our city earlier today. The host committee was certainly a part of the planning of the field trips that Teresa mentioned earlier. I myself even was able to be a tourist, so thank you all for coming to St. Louis and giving me that opportunity. Uh, being at Art House today with the activists and artivists that are a part of our community was really enlightening for me as well. As Director of Community Engagement and Education at Shakespeare Festival St. Louis, I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you a little bit about the community offerings that our fabulous arts community has to offer you. So bear with me, I'm gonna list just a few, okay? Um, if you scroll on your app, which I've been doing a lot, I don't know if you all have, there's a section called Dine Arounds, and you can check out both Dine Arounds that have been planned by the St. Louis community, as well as performance opportunities. And uh, you could catch Lucy Cashin from Equally Represented Arts. Her Trash Macbeth is a Dine Around that I would recommend. 
I would also recommend uh, the Mustard Seed and Theater Nuevo collaboration on the production of Luchadora, which I believe will be, yeah, on this uh, stage perhaps on Saturday. Um, the Prison Performing Arts and the Slightly Askew Theater Ensemble's production of Run On Sentence is also a great option for you to check out. In fact, they stole one of our actresses that was supposed to be in Shakespeare in the Streets. So we like to share here in St. Louis. Uh, we also have the Black Reps Commission of Canfield Drive, which I believe you can, can experience tomorrow night, and Stray Dog Theater's Hedda Gabler. And that is certainly not everyone. Um, we are not short of theater here to share. Uh, Shakespeare Festival St. Louis has not one but two shows running. We are in our, the height of our summer season as we have also welcomed Tom Ridgely, our new executive producer, to our company. So you can catch Romeo and Juliet in our city Civic Gem Forest Park, and that's directed by Elena Arouse from New York City. And then also uh, a special project to me is Shakespeare in the Streets Blow Winds, which I believe the winds are blowing right now outside. So I am a little nervous. It's dress rehearsal for Shakespeare in the Streets right now, about 10 blocks away from the hotel. And Shakespeare in the Streets is our adaptation of King Lear, written by Nancy Bell and Mariah Richardson. This is an opportunity to experience uh, the stories of St. Louis through the lens of not only our community, but the adaptation of Nancy. Lamar Harris is our musical director and composer, so you can check out up to 100 performers, including a, a church choir, a step team, the Gentlemen of Vision, and a 20-piece band, telling you a little bit more about St. Louis, both maybe some of the things that frustrate us and some of the things we want to celebrate. So that's a taste of what we've got on deck for you all this weekend. Now, Steve mentioned the party. That's going to follow tonight. If that's not enough for you, we have another party. Friday night, you can check out the late night party, and that's at 9 p.m. at the Kranzberg Arts Foundation's .zac. We're taking it over, so come join us. Thank you so much. We welcome you to St. Louis, and I'd like to introduce Susan Booth from the Alliance Theater to the stage. <laughs> It's almost an old-fashioned idea to dedicate over 30 years of your life to a single job, putting ambition for an organization above ambition for self, and curating a multi-decade conversation with your community. That's what Steve Wolf's been doing. Having held the positions of the Repertory Theater of St. Louis's Managing Director, Production Manager, and Interim Artistic Director, in 1986 he made it official and became Artistic Director. And at the conclusion of the coming season, he will step down, having defined and animated the rep for 33 years in that position. So um, depressing though this exercise will be for some of us, if you are younger than 33 and are able, will you please stand up? <laughs> Come on. No, stay, stay, stay standing. Since before these people were born. <laughs> Steve was running a theater. <laughs> and it would be tempting to call it his theater, but Steve has made it his lifetime work to create a theater that belonged to St. Louis. And St. Louis has made it known through countless honors and appointments and by showing up in deeply sustaining numbers that he's done it, and yes, the rep is their theater. Steve hasn't gone with the easy approach to running a theater, by the way. His own productions as a director run the gamut from premieres to Pirandello, with stops for Albie's Goat, Brex Galileo along the way. He created the Ignite Festival of new plays to bring his audience challenging new work before the rest of us could get to it, giving first outings to plays by Ayad Akhtar, Mike Liu, Mona Mansour, countless others, he created, this is my personal favorite, 
He created the off-ramp series, bringing completely off-color and off-kilter work to his audience in an alternate venue, which is a pretty ballsy and devious move, if you ask me. <laughs> and he's fostered more careers, actors, writers, designers, and directors, than you can count on many, many hands. A whole bunch of years ago, a few months after I'd been hired as the Alliance's artistic director, I directed at the rep for Steve. I'm sure a production happened in there somewhere, but most of the time I was rubbernecking an organization to see what I could steal. <laughs> I remember a first rehearsal attended by this enormous cohort of deeply invested volunteers. I remember a staff who, whether administrator, props artisan, stage manager, articulated a sense of fierce pride in their theater and its work. I remember Steve's near daily presence in the rehearsal hall, something I initially interpreted as severe trepidation on his part about my abilities. <laughs> but I later learned was evidence of his total love affair with this process. And when I returned a few seasons later, I remember being welcomed back like family and feeling both ridiculously fortunate and deeply humbled by the lived lesson of doing this weird and fungible artistic director job with your whole soul and being. At TCG, we applaud artistry. We applaud risk. We applaud deep engagement. And now, by applauding Steve Wolf, we're going to applaud all of those things. We are going to present him with the TCG Theater Practitioner Award, and we are going to applaud his unswerving loyalty to the greater cause of leading a theater in an ever-evolving and lifelong conversation with its community. Please thank Steve Wolf. Wow, that's a hell of an introduction, thank you. Yeah, I love the process. I love to watch the work, that's true. I know it upsets people, but uh, you know, I love the art, I love the form. So thank you, Susan, thank you, TCG. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I'm honored uh, by this recognition, and it's especially meaningful to come from TCG and from my good friend, Susan. I've been in this field a long time. Uh, I've seen a lot in our world of the profession, missing the NEA site visits, seen a lot in the wide world too. It's hard not to try to figure out how we collectively can move the country and get us out of the trouble we are in. We speak to so many people on a daily basis. Is there something to be done? Is there some, more to be done? I feel this very keenly. We bring people together. We are a place for ideas and thoughts, a kind of meeting place. Our art can be a catalyst for galvanizing a country being torn apart by recklessness. Enough soapbox. I've been living this dream, this gig, for a long time. I wanted to be doing my job since I was in junior high. To run a major arts institution in a metropolitan area was something I aspired to. Does that mean my dream world as an adolescent was screwed up? Well, yeah, probably. Uh, but I'm aware that so few people get to live their dream, and f I feel quite special about that. 30 plus years at the Rep, 40 shows that I directed, over 300 shows that I produced, that's a whole lot of practitioner work. Um, and I can only hope, um, those of you that stood at being under 33, uh, that there are some out there that can find that kind of fulfillment in our field. 
We are so important as a civilizing structure to our society. The flame needs to keep on burning. In Arcadia, Hannah says, it's wanting to know that makes us matter. Otherwise, we are going out the way we came in. I just want to know. I don't know enough. Our particular profession gives us the ability to share this passionate desire to know through the telling of great stories. It's been a fantastic and unique and special ride. Thank you so much for this award. in the NEA site visits, and I know uh, the first time I met Steve is when he was uh, doing site visits, and I was a young, uh, fairly early career manager at the time, and he uh, was just, I remember him being so generous with his time and really giving me a lot of insight on the field and insight on the organization I was in at the time. So I really want to express my gratitude to you as well, Steve. You've been a great mentor to so many people in this field. Um, at the heart of what makes our conference special is also the opportunity for intergenerational exchange. We just witnessed a little of that with our, um, our, our mapping exercise. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> um, but we also have uh, the opportunity now to, um, in addition to honoring Steve's legacy, um, to really honor in this very same session and celebrate the impact of a rising artist and leader. Uh, to help me do so, playwright Kui Wen wanted to be here in person, but he's in rehearsal. Uh, he did ask if we could make him into a hologram, but our tech's not there yet, so instead he made a lovely video. Kui? What's up, Andros? It's your boy, Kui Gwen. I'm here to congratulate you on winning this prestigious <laughs> award, which I'm pretty sure you are in New York again, because I'm pretty sure TCG will have given you enough time to write yourself a speech. But knowing you, I'm pretty sure that speech is all super Asian and humble and says things like, thank you so much, I don't deserve this, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for this person or that person, or yada, yada, yada. Well, stop. <laughs> First off, you do deserve this. In my opinion, you deserve every directing award there is. Second, you're here because of you, not anyone else, because you're a genius. You're innovative, and you, most importantly, you're fun. Hell, you went to Yale, and you're not above dragging toy armadillos across the state just to get yourself a cheap laugh. And this is what <laughs> makes you amazing, because you're equal parts heart as well as mine. If you don't believe any of that, please believe this. I don't think I'm still writing theater if it weren't for you. This is how much I love being in the room with you. I'm willing to write some of the dumbest, most ridiculous things about my family just to be in the room with you to make them jokes. <laughs> you busted your ass to be here right now. Please own this moment. You deserve it. I love you. You're my sister. You're one of my best friends. I wish I could be here right now to celebrate you, but because I can't, I want you to know this one thing. Look around the room right now. Look at all these people celebrating you and realize this. They all owe you at least a drink or some food because if they don't, they're not doing their jobs for either themselves or the theaters. Get yourself some free shit. Anyways, I will see you in eight months when you and I will be back together again doing Poor Yellow Rednecks, a VidGon Part 2 for South Coast Rep. Look at how I plug our shit. Anyways, have fun. I love you. You are the absolute best. Have May. May, are you here? I'm, I'm very pleased to give you the Alan Schneider Award. Schneider Award comes with this as well. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put it there. Okay. Um, gee, thanks, Kui Gwen. You just made me cry before I'm supposed to be up here. 
Um, he's right, I did have like a, a, a very formal, very grateful speech, and it actually, <laughs> it actually means a lot for someone to say, you own this moment, and that's what I say with all of my actors right before they take their first curtain call, is that you deserve this, you give so much of yourself to the audience, let them give back to you. So I'm gonna relish in doing that. Um, I know I didn't get here on my own. I just want to um, thank all the people that helped me stand here today, um, the people that lift me up every day, my family, my husband, and my amazing group of friends. Um, I want to thank TCG and the committee and the panelists for um, uh, selecting me. Um, I also want to thank Mark Masterson, who gave me my two biggest breaks and nominated me for this award and um, jump-started this uh, relationship I had with Kui uh, as he produced Be It Gone. Um, you know, so many supporters I've had over the years, John Eisner, John Diaz, Bill Rowell, she wrote letters on my behalf. And um, I just want to thank uh, Mark Clements and Chad Bauman at Milwaukee Rep, who have given me an artistic home over the years, and this past year a place at the table for artistic and institutional decisions. Um, their support of me reinforces their vision to put art at the center of the organization. And this is just one of the many steps this leadership has taken to find innovative ways to mentor the next generation of leaders. But most of all, I want to thank my theater family uh, for Kui and Kemp and Idris and Ray and Chisa and Stephanie and the designers and actors that just make me who I am today. You feed my inspiration and you share my passions. You feed my curiosities and you deal with my mercurial disposition when I'm in the, that horrible state of I don't know. Um, you make me a stronger artist and a stronger person and you help me see the joy uh, every day and the possibility. Um, when I first attended uh, TCG, I was only 21, and I was terrified of actually everybody <laughs> in this room, and I was also just didn't really feel like I belonged here. At that point, I could only dream of doing theater for my job, and now I feel like my job is to dream. Through the support of all the people that believed in me, I emerged from a young woman who spoke quietly but passionately about a society she envisioned to be the one that's pushing that society forward by the work that it, she creates. I wish I could go back to that 21-year-old and tell that first-generation immigrant born in rural Virginia who had only seen her first professional theater production at age 17 that she'd be standing here uh, to accept this award for directing. Um, but how could I have imagined it? I'd never seen another person who looked like me or my family on stage. Um, until the age of 21 when I saw Jessica Hagedorn's Dog Eaters at the Public. It also dawned on me when I saw that production that, um, that I had never seen so many Asians in one room together. Um, at least, uh, you know, Asians I wasn't related to already. Um, when I was coming of age as a director, I never assisted a woman. I never assisted a person of color. And of all the Lord theaters that I have worked, only two were helmed by female artistic directors. Um, I was just reminded, because I talked to my sister recently, um, of this memory I had, um, when, not too long ago, I watched uh, Chloe Kim make history when she won the gold for the women's half pipe with a nearly perfect score. And my six-year-old mixed-race nephew, upon seeing her receive that gold medal, she said, he said, but she is an American. How could a six-year-old whose Filipino mother, my sister, who also happens to be a surgeon at Johns Hopkins, not per be perceived as someone uh, that could not be perceived as American? How could he not perceive that someone with Asian skin could be American or could represent the United States of America? What did that make me and his mother and his grandfather in his eyes? Not American and still an other at just age six? Where did he get those ideas? So, Represent representation matters. Telling stories that have not found their way into the mainstream matters. Dismantling stereotypes and reframing history to reflect those who have been left out of the telling of that history, that matters. I'm a living testament to that. Together with my Viet Gone family, we made a romantic comedy about two Asian refugees in Arkansas, a new American love story. In Kemp Power's Little Black Shadows, we told a story to honor the shadows whose backs this country was built upon but whose history had never been told on stage. In Idris Goodwin's The Way the Mountain Moved, we tell the story of how the West was really one. And the escaped slaves, the Native Americans, the immigrants, the Mexicans, and those fleeing from religious persecution, those that inhabited it. 
I take up the mantle, as many of my colleagues have, to shift the narrative of the American theater to a new norm, to embrace wholeheartedly our responsibility to present more than a single story, to redefine what it means to be American, and redefine what it means to have an American family, to rewrite that classic American story, to reframe history and create new classics and new ways of storytelling. I want to show that work directed by me or women like me, works written by women or artists of color are not risky, they are essential, and they are essentially American. You have given me a great gift today. The Alan Schneider Award is given on the basis of merit and artistry. And to be recognized on this level means that the values that I espouse of citizenry, diversity and inclusion, and artistic adventurousness have made it into the national conversation. Receiving this award has already changed me. It has bolstered my confidence as a director, and it also helped me realize the strength of my own voice and my potential to change the theatrical landscape. And I look forward to more women, more artists of color changing the landscape with me. I look forward to seeing them on stage, backstage, off stage, writing, directing, designing. I look forward to them walking the halls of power upstairs and redirecting financial success to support and empower those very communities. So I thank you again for your warm reception of me. Thank you for letting me uh, bask in this moment. And thank you for believing in me and helping me take another step forward. And I hope that together we can march step by step to a truer representation of the world we live in and the world that we imagine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, May. It's always um, so exciting to see May's work and to talk with her and hear her views and also just everything that's happening at Milwaukee Rep right now with Chad and Mark uh, and May working together there.